Jeremy Tracy of Tracy Boards coming back at you with another video in our series specifically designed to help make sure your first Crokinole tournament is the best day ever. Specifically in this one we're going to talk about tournament scoring and how to fill out your scorecard. You may be thinking tournament scoring what are you talking about? There's two types of scoring there's what's referred to as tournament scoring as well as what's referred to as traditional scoring. I'm not going to dive down that rabbit hole right now if you'd like to learn more about that we have a blog post that goes in depth on both of those scoring systems. The blog's on our website, I'll put a link down below this video. This one is all about tournament scoring, how to fill out your scorecard. You are going to be given a scorecard that looks like this. You see a spot at the top, it's got your name, it's got your group. That's simply going to mean that you're in competitive group two or rec group one or something like that. That's more for the organizers, but your name is on there and your group and you will also see 12 rows of games. To be clear, you're not necessarily going to play 12 games. We just have allotted enough room to make sure we've got ourselves covered. How many rounds is going to be determined by the number of people? Now, let's zero in on what each row of that looks like because each person, each opponent you play, you're going to use one row of your scorecard to track what happens in that match. So as you sit across from your opponent, you are going to play four rounds. And the way tournament scoring works, at the end of the round, if you have won that round, you get two points. If you lost that round, you get zero points. If you tied that round, you get one point. And to be clear, it does not matter if you win or lose that round by five points or a hundred points. A win is a win is a win. You will also see a row underneath the points row that says 20s. That is where you're going to track your 20s. The reason we do that is because sometimes they're used to determine a tiebreaker. There also may or may not be some sort of a prize attached to the player in your division who sinks the most 20s throughout the day. When it comes to the scorecard and filling out your scorecard, the most important thing to know, this is probably the most important thing I'll say in this video or any video in the history of time, when it comes time to fill out your scorecard, do not put your scorecard on the playing surface of your board and write on it. If you do that, please bring cash, you're buying the board. I'm joking but I'm not. What can happen is if you write, whatever you write can indent the lacquer of the board. Truthfully, if the paper is really thin and you push hard, it's more likely, but the only surefire way to make sure that doesn't happen is abstinence. Put your, put your scorecard on the table beside the board and that's where you write your score, not on the playing surface. And if you see someone doing that, please go, whoa, and remind them to write it on the table. Now we are going to run through a quick example. So you sit down across from your first opponent, you play that first round. When the round ends, let's just say you won that round. So on the points row, you are going to put down two points for the win. In that round, you scored 120. So in that row, you're going to put 120. In the second round against that same opponent, they won that round, which means you lost. You're going to put down a zero for your loss, but you scored 220, so you're going to put a two in that row. The third round, you guys are fairly evenly matched. You go head to head, you tie that round, and you got 120, so you put one in for the tie, you put one in for the 20. The, third, the fourth and final round, you come back strong and you win that round and you also get three 20s. Your 20 shooting is on fire, clearly. So that round ends at which point you are going to tally it up. So you, for that match against that opponent, you have five points and you have seven 20s. Well done. You will also see a box off to the side that says opponent's initials. So once you've filled out your scorecard at the end of that game or match, you trade scorecards with your opponent and you will each just quickly double check and make sure there were no mistakes. If there's mistakes on that and that things don't tally up right at the end, it's a lot of extra work for the volunteers. So just give it a quick look and make sure nobody inadvertently made a mistake on their scorecard. Give that initial, trade it back, and then you move along to your next match. Now a question we often get about tournament scoring is what if you tie? There's four rounds. It's very possible you end up with four points each. Do you break that tie? Absolutely not. It's a timed match. You've got time to play four rounds and it doesn't matter what happens in each individual match in a round robin. What it is, it's the accumulation of how many points you get throughout your matches. That's what determines who moves into which pools in the afternoon. So a tie is fine, you just move on.
There you have it. That's a quick rundown of tournament scoring and how to fill out your scorecard. Again, this isn't the be all and end all. It's not the way every Crokinole tournament on earth needs to be run. We have just found it is a simple, very effective way to keep the day moving fast and fun while you're playing the greatest game on earth.